So today I've taken the liberty to go through every single Tarkov setting one by one and try to figure out what settings will impact you the most, specifically on streets. I've been testing for roughly 45 minutes to an hour on this uh, little strip right here in front of me. And uh, I've got the stats, I've got the notes, and we're going to go through each setting. I'll guide you on what I think you should pick, and I'll give you guys my updated settings for patch 13.5. Let's get into it. So firstly, as you guys might know, BSG released a tweet uh, this morning that said that they were going to add a patch that would specifically help to optimize streets. Uh, if you guys saw my stream that I did yesterday, if you're watching this today, I post this, uh, you will know that the performance on streets was uh, less than optimal. So uh, tested it again, both in a scav raid and in a offline raid with this pass through. Uh, didn't notice anything remarkable in the offline pass through, but online I did notice it felt um, anecdotally at least a little bit more stable. Um, my FPS wasn't jumping up and down as much, though it still was going between 50 and 70. It was a bit more fluid in between those numbers, so that's a big bonus. Fluidity is key, stability in your frame times is key. Um, you can see that in the top right, for example, on my MSI Afterburner overlay. So that was a good thing to see. But because I didn't notice anything with that, I figured I'd take it upon myself to go through and try to see what the difference was with each setting that I have bumped up because I don't play at lowest settings uh, and see what was killing my FPS during a CPU bottleneck, which I was in um, during my testing. If you're looking at my numbers right now, do keep in mind I do have Streamlabs open, so there's extra strain that's being put on my GPU right now, which is why you're probably seeing that maxed out. During this testing, I didn't have anything open except for Escape from Tarkov, so that's why I had a bit more of a CPU bottleneck than a GPU one when I was testing. So these are the settings that I was running after I decided to completely lower all my settings, just to see what sort of difference I would see in FPS. Uh, so there's a hell of a difference in the visuals, as you can probably tell. Uh, there's not actually that much of a performance bump. Uh, and in my testing right here, I did notice that there was only a 7 FPS increase on average. Uh, and on run to run, it was just about the same. So with that, I could clearly see that I was hitting, for the most part, a CPU bottleneck. And it was pretty consistent that my higher graphic settings weren't making much of a difference in my performance. You can see even that I went to try to disable post effects to see if that made any difference at all. And it didn't, at least in my performance with them on versus without. Then, uh, as I was scrolling through the wonders of YouTube and Twitter today, uh, I saw posts and videos talking about reflex potentially being a bugged feature now in the game, causing you to lose FPS drastically, especially after your first raid of the day. So I lowered all of my settings and then enabled reflex and even did it with on plus boost and didn't notice any measurable or repeatable change in the performance either. This could still be an issue though, but I haven't been able to recreate it myself yet. And I may try that on stream later tonight. You should be there. If you are one of those people who is experiencing performance drastically decreasing raid after raid, my first suggestion would be to disable reflex and then continue to go on a couple raids. As far as I've been told, there's been a lot of improvement with that. So even though for me, this happens quite regularly where there's settings that don't help my performance, I still want to recommend it just in case it'll help you out too. Now to actually testing each setting one at a time. So the first setting I went from the bottom up to uh, was anisotropic filtering. And if you don't know what that is, uh, you'll see the effect of it quite clearly on the road line that's in front of me here. You can see it's quite blurry, definitely smudgy. And what Anisotropic will do is it'll help clear up that texture when you're not directly facing it. As if I look straight down, that is clearly not what the street line is supposed to look like. So if I go in here and set my Anisotropic filtering to on instead of off, you'll clearly see that that line is much more clear at a distance, especially with the angle that it's at. Now, do keep in mind if you're in a GPU bottled, bottled? Wow. If you're in a GPU bottlenecked scenario, it may be important to take, in, take that into account because this will increase your GPU usage by at least a couple percent. So if you're in that situation, I would recommend to put this on per texture instead of on. But if you're not in that scenario and you're, you're in a CPU bottleneck, like most people tend to be, Having it on will really help with your clarity and will improve your overall experience, especially when aiming down sights at long ranges and stuff like that. I'll put per texture on screen too, so you'll be able to see what that looks like in comparison with on. As I mentioned before, as I skipped this setting previously, NVIDIA Reflex, I'm gonna have that on for my, for my testing. 
and that is what I did when I was testing it before. But I mentioned previously, if you're having that bug, try to turn it off, see what happens. Next on the menu is SSR, which is Screen Space Reflections. This handles the reflections that you'll see in glass, uh, on the ground with puddles, especially when your gun is in your hand too. If it's raining, you'll see a reflection of the metal on your gun and on various different objects in the game as well. This, I really like how this looks, especially when it's raining. So I tend to have this at high. You won't see much of an effect right now as there's no puddles or anything for me to look at. But if you're looking through puddles, it handles the reflections that you see within them, handles how like grainy they are and the resolution of them and their clarity. So if you like that, if you like that as touch to detail and you don't mind sacrificing a bit of performance on the GPU side of things, then I would recommend setting this to low. High is just my personal preference purely because of the reflections in the water looking higher quality and also the fact that it adds the reflections to the guns and, and stuff like that. As far as I tested previously, low does not actually add the reflection to your gun, only high does. So if you want those extra reflections on your gun and that sort of thing, then you will have to crank it up a little bit further. If you're like most people though, and aren't a complete freak like I am, you probably just want the reflection on the ground, in which case I would recommend low. And if you're aiming for absolute best performance, especially if you're GPU bottlenecked, keep it off. Next on the menu is HBAO or, or Horizon Based Ambient Occlusion. What this does is it puts shadows around objects and especially in corners and that sort of thing. If you don't like that and don't like how it looks, I'll show you how it looks in game right now. Uh, you can see, especially on my gun here, the shadows that are around my hand as it's touching the gun and in the distance that that car is a little bit darker than it was previously. This can make it slightly harder to see in dark areas. So if you want the best visibility possible or if you want the best performance possible, it is a pretty good idea to just keep this off. Otherwise, if you're like me and like having the extra shadows around your gun and that sort of nature, you may want to stick to high performance or max performance as when you get up to these settings, it can draw a bit more performance, but it is your personal preference on how deep and dark you like those shadows to be. I just test this one out and see what your personal preference is and see if it impacts your FPS at the setting that you enjoy it at. My personal preference though for reference and what I'll be running in the future is high. Next on the agenda, uh, AMD FSR 2.2, FSR 1.0 and DLSS. I have videos on all of these. Uh, they will be in my most viewed videos probably. You'll see them titled and I explain the uh, how each one works and which ones you should be choosing. Um, in those videos. DLSS does a great job at removing any flickering that you see in the distance, for example, with trees or bars and that sort of thing. So if you don't like the flickering, DLSS is actually a really nice feature uh, and it will upscale though from a lower resolution image. So you want, if you want the uh, best clarity possible at range, you probably want to ignore upscaling entirely. Or if your CPU bottlenecked putting on upscaling will not improve your performance. So just keep that in mind. If you're looking to use an upscaler to improve your performance, you must be GPU bottleneck. As I'm demonstrating right here, if I go to DLSS and put it towards performance and I go back in the game, my FPS has not changed whatsoever. And that is because I am in a CPU bottleneck scenario right now. Please do keep that in mind when you're selecting upscaling as it can make or break your experience in Tarkov for no reason, especially if you're actively being CPU bottlenecked and you don't know it. Resampling we're going to completely ignore as it's not even worth your time. It just changes. It's a render scaling feature. Uh, it's not worth even looking at. Keep it at 1.0 or 1.0. And then something that can actually hurt your performance if you are in a CPU bottleneck scenario is anti-aliasing right here. As you can see, going from anisotropic filtering down the line here, you can see one of the things that actually did consistently bite a little bit out of the performance was TAA. It did bounce back up here. Uh, and I actually deleted the second testing that I did for each one of uh, these here, though I should have kept them. This can have an impact on your performance if you are CPU bottlenecked, however so slight it is. Though the clarity that you get from having an anti-aliasing on uh, and the flickering that decreases is why I run it in the first place. You can see on my screen between off and TA high the drastic difference in how sharp some of the pixels are in the distance and that sort of thing. If you are very sensitive to that and you don't like how that looks in Tarkov, having TAA is the one that I recommend. TAA high just decreases the amount of blurriness that you're gonna see within the image and improves the flattening of the jagged edges that you might see on pixels. For me, I run TAA high as I can spare the extra GPU, or GPU headroom, but if you can't, I would keep it at TAA and if you don't like the slight blurriness that TAA presents, I would keep it at FXAA. 
I do not recommend anti-aliasing off because it does look significantly worse than any of the other solutions that are available. In my opinion, that's just personal preference. Uh, you should just look at it yourself and come to a conclusion as to what benefits you the most. Just keep in mind any, any aliasing off will have a lot of pixels that are either jagged or flickering, especially at distance. Now, overall visibility uh, is another one of those settings that can affect you if you are in a GPU bottleneck scenario. Depending on what's on the ground, it can have an effect uh, CPU wise, especially if it has to constantly load in and load out a bunch of different items that are on the ground. My personal preference with this is 1500 as I think that's a nice sweet spot, uh, especially when you're in more long ranged maps. Some people like it at 1000 when they play more close ranged uh, maps, but do keep in mind any settings that like especially 400, you are going to see a lot of pop in when you have it this low. Having it at 1500, for example, allows you to see a lot of the clutter that's further away from me in this image, and it'll reduce the amount of pop in that may distract you from your gameplay while you're in raid. If you don't like seeing pop in, my recommendation would be 1500 and really no more than that. Uh, if you're okay with a little bit of pop in, if you want to try to get a little bit of extra performance, go for a thousand, but I wouldn't recommend 400. Uh, in pretty much any circumstance. Then we have LOD quality. This actually significantly decreased my performance when I was in a CPU bottleneck scenario between two and the normal three setting that I have it at. This just controls the level of detail of, ob of objects when they're really far away. As you can see, for example, I'll try to zoom in on that tree in the distance. Uh, it is actually a 2D sprite. It is not the actual 3D tree that you see, say, here right in front of me. So if I bump this all the way up to 4, for example, not that I recommend you run this, objects in the distance will look a lot higher quality and will be loaded in at a higher level of detail. That's what the LOD stands for in the LOD distance. My sweet spot for performance if you're trying to, if you're on like a lower end rig, is probably 2.5. I don't recommend two though, as it can make again, a lot of pop in of assets at closer range, especially with trees. If you don't want to see trees converting into 3D objects, you probably want to keep this at at least 2.5. I run it at three for comfort's sake. So it's at a decent bit away for any sort of pop in. So I notice it less. Uh, and I wouldn't recommend going too far past that unless you have a beefy computer. The last two settings in here are shadows and texture quality. Uh, recently, actually, there was a comment uh, talking about texture quality, which I'll mention for first, um, saying that high textures now require 11 gigabytes. And uh, I didn't believe you at first because uh, I didn't see that until I went on the new streets. Uh, and then I fucked around and found out. So if you are having VRAM issues, for example, with me, when I was running high textures and getting into raid on streets, I was getting really close to my eight gigabyte cap. So lowering the textures down to medium didn't affect me too much and gave me that extra safety net, especially if there's a lot of action going on and the VRAM needs to be um, pressed. I don't have to worry about that. And it's a lot easier um, and a lot safer, especially if you're playing a lot of the newer maps, Lighthouse Streets in particular, as they have gotten a lot more VRAM hungry uh, the more this game has gone in development. Low textures can look a little bit muddy, but I would recommend them if you're on a four or even six gigabyte card, especially if you're planning on playing streets and stuff like that regularly. There are a lot of famous content creators who play with the low texture quality and most people barely notice the difference. But uh, if you're one of those people who does notice the difference, medium is a good step up and allows you to have a lot more clarity for a bit less of the performance impact that high will give you as far as the VRAM consumption goes. Shadow quality, there's really no reason to have this past low pushing it higher will just put more load on your GPU when it isn't necessary, and it doesn't really look that much better either. Since we're still on the topic of VRAM, one of the settings that I highly recommend people check out is MIPS streaming. It does put a bit more strain on your CPU, but it will help to lower your VRAM usage, especially, like I said, if you're playing these heavy maps like Streets. If you have a fast enough M.2 SSD, then you can check MIPS streaming and bump these up as far as possible. Um, make sure that you're not crashing when you're doing so. Um, run a scav raid after you put these uh, specifically MIPS streaming on just to make sure that you're not experiencing any issues with it. And then once you've made sure that these settings aren't cranked too far up, then you will be set. Keep in mind the lower that this MIPS streaming buffer size is at, the more time it will take for textures to load in. As what MIPS streaming is doing is it's streaming in lower quality textures at first and then upping the texture quality uh, over time, but it's still a pretty small amount of time to help 
ease the load on the GPU's VRAM. Likewise, this setting also has something to do with it as well, so try to pump these as high as you can as long as your game stability can afford it. Keep in mind, I have been having a little bit of an issue this wipe with MIP streaming causing black screens for a little bit after a raid exfil. Uh, it's only crashed once or twice so far this ra uh, this wipe, but if you are running MIP streaming and you notice that you're crashing nearly every single time after a raid, then I would recommend disabling it, especially if you have the VRAM to spare. If you guys would like me to have a more in-depth video of MIP streaming, let me know in the comments below and I can do some further testing just to see what differences there might be, especially in load times on Xfil. Finally, post effects. I did testing with this as well, as you can see right here. Didn't have much of an if issue uh, as far as performance goes. You can see it's run to run variance between what it was previously before I changed the settings. So uh, not much to see here. As I turn it on, you can see there is a huge difference in how my game looks compared to previously. And I simply can't live without these settings as I, I really think it helps the game be much more vibrant and uh, less making you fall asleep sort of vibe. Finally, these two settings right here in the game tab, automatic RAM cleaner, I highly recommend, especially if you're at 16 gigs of VRAM or lower just because it does help you stay under that cap quite consistently. I'm not sure if this causes it as I haven't been able to pin the exact cause. Wow, uh, Nikita's angry. But as I load into raid, uh, sometimes I notice, especially on streets, that it takes a second uh, for the automatic RAM cleaner to kick in and I see my RAM usage drastically decreasing as I enter the raid. So just keep that in mind in the first five seconds or so on bigger maps, you may notice lower FPS until it sort of cleans everything up, if that makes sense. Finally, only use physical cores seems bugged again. I can't get it to work properly. And uh, as I check my core usage, it's just not changing anything. Um, even on restart, I, I don't understand what's going on with this setting. It may be broken again, uh, but I don't notice any performance impact with it on versus off. Again, I always recommend you guys to try out those settings for yourself, uh, especially with the full restart in an offline raid or in a scav raid and see if it makes any difference to your FPS, especially when it comes to stutters. And as always, there is still the process lasso method in enabling this, which I have detailed in several videos in the past that you can find on my channel. And finally, with binaural audio, I haven't noticed any difference with the performance on versus off. Uh, it seems like this is still okay, but again, if you have noticed an FPS dip and you can't find any other cause, I do recommend you check this option as well test it with a restart and see if anything changed with binaural audio as well. So to sum it up, if you're on the lowest of the low end PC in a CPU bottleneck, these are the settings that I would recommend. If you're on a mid range PC and you want the best of both worlds, this is what I'd recommend, especially if you're on a bottleneck. And then finally, if you are on a higher end PC and want a superior experience, these are the settings that I would recommend with texture quality set to high. You could also press the overall visibility and LOD quality if you'd like to, to have better detail over distance, it's your call if you have a more powerful PC than mine. And of course, if you are in a GPU bottleneck, you always have DLSS and FSR 2.2, depending on what GPU you have, and those will help you in GPU bind, especially if you don't mind a little extra blurriness in exchange for lack of flickering and also improved performance. With that, I hope you enjoyed my settings guide for 13.5. I know it was a little bit of a rant uh, and I am dying. So I should end this video pretty quick. Hope you guys enjoyed. Tune in tonight as I'll be streaming in a probably three to four hours after this post goes live. I'll probably put it in the text at the top of the screen. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to hop into my Discord. We're pretty active in there. And if you have any questions, you can ask them. And there's plenty of people there who are willing to help. Finally, it's always a good idea. You can always hop into my streams and ask questions. I love talking with you guys and figuring out the, the issues that you're having live. So... Remember, that's always an option too. I'll be streaming tonight if you're watching it as I post this. And I'll see you guys then. This is Clem. Locking out. Later.